Welcome to the shop. I haven't been playing guitar in over five or six months, something like that. So, I think it's time for a change in strings, seeing so, you know, as this has just been hanging on the wall. So I figured I'd do a little bit of, just a bit of cleanup. And get this thing working. And bring you through my process. And this is just a string change, it's nothing really, nothing really crazy. Kind of a yearly string change thing. But it does need a little bit of cleaning up. So we'll do that. This is my Simon and Patrick S&P 6 with a spruce top on it. And it's oh, about 20 years old, I think. I've had this for now for about 20 years. I'm going to move you around a little bit here. A little bit difficult working around the camera. Well, maybe someday I'll get used to it. Now these things, these pins, I always keep them in the same order. So when I lay them down, I'm going to put them back to where they have to be, in order on the bench. And I'll give it a bit of a clean. I'm using Dunlop guitar polish and cleaner. Uh, use what you want. <clears throat> They're all pretty much the same. In fact, you could probably use a mild soap and water. And it would work just as good. Boy, that lighting's terrible. Got the light coming right in through the window here which is nice for working on not so great for filming though and I just use a soft cloth give everything a little bit of a wipe out I'm not doing a super serious job here I usually clean up your string, string changes because that's when you can get into the nooks and crannies a little bit better want to get some of, like I said I haven't been playing it much so there's not really that much grime on it mostly just dust from hanging on the wall so we just want to give it a quick wipe off here Just to get the crap off of it. I 
And I always try to put it down on something soft. So this is a brand new packing blanket that I bought at the dollar store actually. It's only about seven dollars. Maybe less than that, not exactly sure. have to make some proper blocks. This is uh, Planet Waves. A little doodad there. Eh, does alright. So I'm just getting some of the dust off here. Not a lot to it, I'm going to call that clean. Uh, one extra step I want to do. I use this on the frets. That cleans them up pretty nicely. I'm not trying to level them or anything. I've gone through grits of sandpaper cleaning them up. At different times, sorry. Kind of hesitate in my speech when I'm concentrating. So we just take a lot of this. Give it a little bit of a wipe. Let's see if I can get in there. How close can I get you? And just a couple of pieces of painter's tape to keep the mass, the crap off the fretboard. Just a light cleaning. I think in the blog I have a some photos of how I've done my strat copy. And with a little bit of coming up through the grits and polishing and that, you can make them shine like little mirrors, but Usually the first ones that get worn the most, but we'll give them all a little bit of a cleaning up here. Like they say, there's no money past the fifth thread anyways. I 
Okay, I'll save you the boring details and we'll come back in a minute after I'm done this. All right, a little bit of cleanup done on that. And now it's can of worms time. I didn't think I was going to jump into this, but we want to condition the fretboard. It only happens once a year. Unless you live in some place like Arizona or the Mojave Desert or something that's very dry, we want to stop the fretboard from drying out and cracking. Now, I hesitate to use the word moisturize because that gives a connotation of water and that's not what we're going for. Uh, I've read a lot on this and my conclusion is just about everybody is right on it. You can use bore oil for woodwind instruments, lemon oil from the guitar shop which is basically mineral oil with a little bit of lemon scent in it and if you think about it if you use squeeze a lemon you get citrus juice and that's going to actually draw the moisture out of here so lemon oil is kind of a misnomer uh, there's all kinds of stuff that people use but the thing is you only want to do this once a year I go to the drugstore and get just plain ordinary mineral oil Like I said, everybody is right on this. If you watch Dave Reum on Dave's World of Fun Stuff, excellent, excellent repairman. Uh, he uses raw linseed oil, and that's right. Some people say use boiled linseed oil, and they're right also. There is, a, you, as long as you're protecting your fingerboard. Now, the other thing is, is there's calling a rosewood fingerboard or an ebony fingerboard unfinished. Well if you're a woodworker you know that this is a viable finish. So we are refinishing the fretboard in woodworking terms. We are putting a finish on this. And if you're putting linseed oil that's a finish. If you're putting bore oil that's a finish. If you do a cutting board for your kitchen and put mineral oil on it that's a finish. So we're putting a finish on this. How much? Well, I usually just stick my finger in there. Can you see that? And get it damp. And we're going to go spread it around a bit. Now, if you're doing this every string change, you're wrong. You're going to soften the wood and make it spongy, and you're going to have trouble. So don't do this every time. Like I said, once a year. If you live in Arizona, or like I said, someplace very arid, then yes, you might want to do it eight, ten months. Not exactly sure depending how long it needs it. So, pretty much one drop. The fingers dampening. Put on there and then take it off. We don't want to leave it on there. We're just trying to keep the fretboard conditioned. Not moistened, conditioned. So this guitar has gotten this once a year for 20 years. So this bottle of oil is going to last me probably the rest of my life. I'm going to take most of it off. Like I said, dampen your end of your finger and just get enough on there to help keep the wood conditioned. If it dries, it cracks. If it gets too moist, it gets spongy. Again, I don't like the word moist, but... There we go. That's it. My fingerboard is conditioned. 
And that's all there is to it. So it's kind of a can of worms the subject and what to put on your fretboard. But in my opinion, this is the way to do it. Oh, I like to put just a touch on my bridge plate too, just to keep it looking nice. And again, the same thing. Just dampen the end of your finger. Put a wee little bit on. And then wipe most of it off right away. And as long as it's something that doesn't go rancid, it's good. Some sort of conditioning for the fretboard. And that'll stop it from drying out and cracking. Alrighty, time to put some strings on it. I am using the Dario and their light strings. I can't remember what they are. 12 to... I'm not sure. But, use the strings of your choice. Like I said, if you follow Dave Reum, he has some. He's been doing this a long time. And he uses raw linseed oil that he gets from an art supply shop, and I don't disagree with that. It's worked for for him for years and years and years, and he's got happy customers. And I've seen other people use other things, and I can't. I can't fault them either. There's lots of methods out there that have people have used for a long time. And they all work. So use the conditioner of your choice. As long as it doesn't go rancid and it conditions the wood. Okay, so we want the brass one. And how's my camera view here? Not the greatest, so I'll do this here. Put just a wee little, a wee little hook in there. Just a little bit. And then I'll bring you over here. that hook to go under the bridge plate put the pin in and then we go up to the other end let me get you zeroed in here Because a lot of people have some different opinions on this too, on how to do it, and some people don't know how to do it at all. Okay, when you get up to this end, I got a 0.5 millimeter drafting pencil, mechanical pencil. And I'm going to just put a little bit of lead in there. And we'll just give it a nice little coat. Actually, it's not lead. It's graphite. And graphite is a lubricant. So what we're doing here is giving the strings something nice to slide against so we have no binding at the nut. Now, stringing a guitar. 
I'll put the other end here now. I'll just move that a bit. We're going to put some tension on the nut or on the string. Put it in the nut. That's the post it's got to go into. So if I go one post past that and put a kink in it, then we'll get the kink through, get the string through the peg head. And go up to the kink. Put a little bit of tension on there. It goes under. The tail end goes under the wrap. And then it goes bend it up and then the wrap goes under the tail and that gives me just about the right amount zoom you out here and I'll take you over to look uh, is that focusing in on that okay so I got one over top of the wrap let me turn that down tune it down a bit I got one over top and two underneath getting pretty close to being in tune there so I'll let you go again while I put the rest of these strings on here all right we've got our strings on well, I am going to tune it up and I'm going to use a uh, one of these snark tuners they're supposed to be good within I think a cent a cent is one one hundredth of the distance between here and here yeah, they seem to work all right. I don't have a fancy tuner. I do have a uh, little tiny D'Addario one, headstock tuner. And they work pretty good. And I have uh, another mini Planet Waves one. And that works good too. This is going to take a few times to do it. So, I really don't worry about it the first time. I just kind of get it rough. Okay, we're kind of close there. And just snip these off. Get rid of the pokies. And we'll get you zoomed out a bit here. So, I'm kind of in tune. What I like to do is go oh, about a third of the way and give everything a stretch. 
I've always found that if I pull it up, something messes up on me. So I just do it like I'm bending the strings. And give everything a good stretch at a few places along the neck. I try to get my tuning pretty close to the initial attack. I don't let the note develop at all because when you're playing guitar and you hit a note, that's about what you hear. So you want that first just after the initial attack to be in tune. pretty close. Now, just for giggles, I'm going to put a capo on the first fret, put this up into the playing position. How's your view here? Not very good, but neither is mine. I'll try to move this so you can see it. And I'm going to fret right at the body line for an acoustic. Then I'm going to take a set of automotive feeler gauges and in the playing position I'm going to check the relief in the neck. And it should be about 10th hour so maybe a bit less. That looks like I'm right about there. Yeah, I'm calling that good. You can see it lifting right there. It just might be a little bit under 10 thou. So, we're good. The truss rod does not need adjusting. Uh, Kaiser Kappel. I like those. They seem to be uh, one of the better designed ones. Oh, well, I haven't played in five or six months. So we'll see how We'll see how it sounds. This uh, Simon and Patrick seems to be a little of a darker sounding instrument, which is why I like to keep the uh, strings fresh on it.
Oh, am I ever out? This chair isn't most comfortable for it either. Yeah, yeah, excuses. How about I don't practice enough? Is that a good excuse? Thank you.